So that was great. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We recorded like a twenty minute to half an hour conversation about love and then we just found out none of it saved. Hopefully it saves and I can do a blow both of them, but that's just a false hope. I don't know that's gonna happen. Um we were where were we? We just continue. I'm gonna read the quote that we were talking about. Um <laughs> But um, we're going to continue from here. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, that was a good warm-up. You know, you guys look at your thing like it's a blessing. Yes. It was a good warm-up. We, now we know the conversation is heading. Now we know what, what kind of kind of dialogue we're trying to have. I'm trying to have jokes. <laughs> can't yeah, fucking, the you can't repeat the same jokes. I'll laugh just as much. <laughs> um, but the quote that we, we, we were um, going off of was... Um, so I have a Twitter account. And in my Twitter, I post just different meditations. I call it Meditations of a G. Me and I just post like just different quotes and stuff that I've been thinking about. And one of them was, um, so I posted this about last week. It goes, um, Was I in love with her? I guess we'll never really know. And that, that quote, I guess I have to explain the quote again. <laughs> that, that quote just came about when I was just one, one, one time I was just like just chilling and then I was just thinking about my past relationships and just like how I feel about them and like, um, in hindsight, questioning if any of them were real or if any of them had love in it. And so it's like, that's where the quote comes from, was I in love with her? I guess we never really know. And then I went and asked him about how he feels about the quote. I went, I described the quote about how I came to that conclusion, you know, and then he was going on about how um, how his relationships has, have been and like the, the people we've encountered and uh, the girls we've encountered. And then all of that got washed away. So we're going to start again. We have to go back. And I think this is a good place. Let's, let's go back to when you're talking at 18. So that we can make it even more clearer for, this, for the audience, you know, yeah. to understand. So at 18, so we say that what is, we're going to talk about what our relationship was to love and how we kind of developed an understanding with love and mm -hmm. how what we fucked up at the beginning and then what we kind of had to realize through painful experience about love, about women, about life. And then, like, to where we are today, you know, I don't know, much has changed, for, not much has changed for me, I'm still here in the streets, <laughs> I'm still here in the streets, but um, definitely a lot has changed for you, uh, but um, just go from that, so from 18, I can go first, would you want to go first? You can go first. Yeah, of course, you're going to say that, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. So from 18, damn, 18, <laughs> whoa, I, I was always... That I was always the kind of guy who liked girls. Even to this day, I still like girls. Um, I like girls. Girls like me. And so it's a situation where I never, um, I never felt like I, 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 I was never in like a long term relationship. But I was always talking to a girl. I was always dealing with this girl and then this girl and then this girl. And so like that process has always made me like super. Um, int I always got super close with girls, super intimate with girls. Like I was always like able to just like get to the depths of their soul like i would talk to them for hours just on hours on end and facetime on calls just talking to them about life and talking to them about their experiences in life and actually getting to know them and through this process i found myself um see this is where i have the this is where i question this is where the quote comes from because i found myself in a state of love with them yeah but it was also mixed in with lust Mm. Like it was, a, oh, so definitely. yeah, you know what I mean. So I didn't know if it was I was <laughs> loving them to lust them, or I was lusting after them so I could love them. I was lost, uh, you know what I mean. Like I didn't know which follows which, which which was actually leading me. Like I was caring about them, and I was showing them empathy, and I was I genuinely do care about them, but also because I wanted them, I wanted something from them, and like that lack of honesty at that early age led me to like mess up with girls because I would never I was unable to just tell them like, hey, I like you. And like, you know, like all with all your shit, with all your baggage, with all the shit that you're figuring out, all the shit you told me, which is like, whoa, for the like Atlas, I'm fucking putting on the shit on my shoulder. I still see the brilliance in you and I still kind of want you. And I couldn't have that conversation with them. And so like, I always, I'd always lose them. But like, that was me at that age, at 18 years old, not even figuring myself out. So that, I, I guess that ties into it. You don't know yourself, you can't really know someone else, or you can't really, you're not ready to love someone else. And so, like, um, that was me at 18, but do you relate? Is there, like, a difference? What was, what was, 
What was your relationship like with love at that young age? Hopefully this this stays because this is my thing. Maybe this was yesterday. <laughs> Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Um. I don't think I'd had uh, a long form conversation with a lady yeah. or even a girl <laughs> uh, up until that point. Um, I mean, how, how else are you going to talk to girls? Bro? Like, no, like genuinely. It was like, you know, like work is in Sainsbury's or the girls in school, but yeah. not like a conversation <laughs> about anything interesting or meaningful because I just, like, I didn't get. I, d I just didn't get to that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, <clears throat> or when the opportunity came up, I didn't stay and tough it out or brave the awkwardness or, you know, try or even be, uh, <clears throat> you know, even say, hey, I don't know how to do this, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's nothing worse than just, just running all <laughs> away. <laughs> So at uh, 18, yeah, uh, not had a proper conversation with a woman. And then I uh, started working in hospitality. And then that changed like very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you meet like girls from like they're, they were school girls, but now there's something else. Yeah. Like now they're 24, yeah. 25 and they've had abortions. Yeah. <laughs> They're not talking. <laughs> They're not talking. Yeah. They're still talking about boys, like it's high, like high school or primary school. Mm. But the things they're saying about them are different, you yeah. know. <laughs> My pussies, they chill. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a gossipiness, but it's it's toxic, you know, because it's with adults, and adults really know how to hurt you. you know? Yeah, uh, quite deep. So now, like, I just dive into this. Uh, this conversation with women and it's um yeah it's 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 interesting it's interesting they listen differently than guys listen also i think guys really want to help you so like they'll i think they'll like be ready to sort of offer their guidance mm. or solutions support based. solutions yeah, yeah. yeah. girls I don't know if they want to or care <laughs> or just indirectly by just like listening. They just do that sort of anyway, you know? Like, I think they let you talk to yourself rather than guys let you talk to yourself, you know? If they're not interrupting. <laughs> Tell them the about it. Like, themselves. if you can get a girl to not interrupt you as you're maybe answering a long form question or doing a monologue yeah. or you're just ranting, if she can just fuck up yeah for even can you do 30 seconds bitch yeah, give me hard. give me 30 seconds and then we'll try a minute and then two and then if you can get a girl like that like the the relationship you have with yourself is so much better and then you're like shit like i'm pretty good at this thing you know <coughs> um so yeah like 18 yeah hospitality yeah now like you have to talk to girls you yeah know? And then I think you find out very quickly, like, the annoyingness that they have in high school doesn't Dude. go away. Yeah, it's so annoying. The, the toxic shit doesn't go away. It gets worse. <laughs> um, but okay, like, well, before, they had this spell of beauty, right? They, had this, they, always, they always had this spell. They're born with it, right? Um, but in high school, it's, it's like, oh, my God, look at her hair. <laughs> Look at the way she runs. She runs like such a girl, you know. Like you fall, <laughs> you fall in love with like their hair, their eyes, their lips, uh, the way they hug you. As like as like full grown ladies, it's like the way they move their hips or yeah. the way they say certain yeah, things, the way the voice, the way they go from talking to like whispering, and then that just shoots in your fucking ear. Like you realize. It doesn't matter how sort of big and strong you are, they have a different kind of power. Right? Yeah, yeah. And their it's, powers. it's not greater or lesser, but it's just their own kind of power. And if they, you let them have that over you, you're going to love them, but you're going to suffer. <laughs> I hate them too. It's going to be very painful. Because they, I feel like they don't, they probably know they have the power, but they understand how deeply the power affects guys. You know, because they, they're almost like a judgment. You know, mm. if you can't talk to a girl, especially a girl you're attracted to, or a girl you like, you feel like you can't do shit in the world. 
You feel like you're useless. It's just ignored. You just ignore. Yeah. You just feel like oh, I'm just a dirt on the road. When, in fact, she just she just maybe just doesn't care at that moment, or she's just having a tough day. She just it's not really about you, but you feel like it's just pinpointing. And she's talking to you, but she's not talking to you. Yeah. Just especially she's talking to everyone else, not you. And so that was that. That's probably hard for guys growing up when they're talking to girls and they feel like oh man, like I want to say this to her, but like I don't feel like. You know, she, she, I'm not getting through to her, and it's like, especially because, like, girls, at that, as you, like you said, as they get older, they start, like, to, like, really, like, fall into their, their power, start to notice it more, they start mm-hmm. to lord it over guys, just to see if they can, <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah, I don't even like this guy, but, like, I'm going to ask him for, to do something for me, just to see if he will, and most guys do, most guys bend, and then it's, it's, it's so much worse, like, uh, Hey, this is really heavy. Yeah. They don't even ask. <laughs> this is really heavy. And then, you know. Then you, you, you have to. Uh, Mike comes along. But then Henry sees that Mike is picking up that crate for the girl. And now he picks up two. And now Mike's like, bitch. Yeah. I'm helping her. Yeah. And now uh, Mike yeah. picks up three. And now Henry has to pick up four. Now they're competing. Wow. For her, and she hasn't asked one, one thing. One of Most important liability. I didn't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> like I didn't ask him to buy me this Gucci bag. He just, he just bought it to me. He just, I'm just very nice. So it's like it's like uh, a girl asking uh, a guy for like ten pounds, and now because the guy feels good about giving her ten pounds, another guy uh, sees that. Yeah.